Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Brad Widower, and I'm an R&D chemist here at Silk Technologies. As many of you are aware already, we recently launched a new type of liquid chromatography separation that we've dubbed BIST, which stands for Bridge Ion Separation Technology. It's a powerful new HPLC technique that can separate compounds that previously were quite difficult to separate or required complex methods, often involving high salt concentrations, that can quickly ruin LC plumbing. With BIST, you can use one column and a simple isocratic or gradient method to generate your separations. This is a very important new discovery, and we believe it will play a significant role as an integral HPLC tool alongside the classic separation modes such as reverse phase, normal phase, ion exchange, and exclusion, and Hylic. Before we get to the mechanisms that drive BIST, let's take a look at classical ion exchange separation. Understanding IE separation will give us a framework that we can build on in order to understand BIST. IE separation is based on the electrostatic interaction of mobile ions of one polarity with the charged stationary surface of the opposite polarity. To put it more simply, opposite charges attract. In order to facilitate this process, an ionic modifier in the mobile phase is required. In most cases, this process is performed in an aqueous mobile phase, and ionic modifier can be any salt, acid, or buffer. A different mode of separation called ion exclusion is based on the interaction of identically charged ions and the stationary surface. In this situation, the modifier ions form a barrier, and the analyte avoids entering the pores of the stationary phase while they travel down the column in the bulk mobile phase flow. This phenomenon exhibits itself as pre-void elution of the analytes. For example, in a positively charged column with an aqueous mobile phase, protonated dopamine will elute pre-void due to the ion exclusion mechanism. However, when we replace trifluoroacetic acid with sulfuric acid, the protonated dopamine is slightly retained. We tried to explain this surprising observation using other known retention mechanisms, but none of them provide an adequate explanation for this phenomenon. The only significant difference between these ionic modifiers, TFA and sulfuric acid, is the number of negative charges of each acid's dissociated ion in solution. The sulfate ions have a minus 2 charge, while the TFA ions have only a minus 1 charge. We also noticed that the relative concentrations of the organic and aqueous components of the mobile phase significantly affected this new retention behavior when the ionic modifier was H2SO4. When the acetonitrile content was at a near maximum capacity, dopamine retention increased by more than three times. With a single charged TFA buffer, there was almost no ch change in the retention time and the dopamine eluded pre-void regardless of the relative concentrations. We were able to generate similar retention behavior with m xylylene diamine and a high organic mobile phase with a sulfuric acid buffer. With a single charged buffer, like perchloric acid, the analyte eluded with little to no interaction with the column. It seems that there are three requirements for this new technique in order for there to be any retention of a charged analyte on a similarly charged column. First, the mobile phase has to have a high non-aqueous concentration. Second, the mobile phase should have a double charged ionic component. And third, the charge of the ionic component should be opposite to that of the analyte and the stationary phase. Let's explore more about why we think these rules result in this new retention mechanism. In an aqueous mobile phase, all of the ions in solution develop a solvation layer of water dipoles around their surface. You can see that by the glow around each ion. This prevents the ions, even those with multiple charges, from interacting directly with each other and results in a net neutral bulk solution. If the amount of aqueous mobile phase starts to decrease by replacing water with a miscible organic solvent like acetonitrile, then the solvation layer around each ion starts to deplete. But if the buffer ion has only one charge, then the analyte and buffer ion form a net neutral type pair and will not participate in the electrostatic interaction with the stationary phase. However, when the ionic modifier has a double charge, the attraction forces between the oppositely charged analyte modifier ion and the surface start to bring counter ions together. This eventually leads to the formation of bridges between the similarly charged surface and analyte ions via the oppositely charged buffer ions.
The degree of retention strongly depends on the number of charges each analyte has. Analytes with more charges will be able to create more bridges, resulting in longer retention. However, in an aqueous mobile phase, the bridges will break due to the solvation of the ions and the retention will decrease drastically. Here we show exactly that. This type retention, or K prime, depends on the number of charges on the analyte. Triple charge 246-tris dimethylaminophenol in green has a higher K prime than double charged M xylene diamine in red, which also has a higher K prime than single charge dopamine in blue. This is for any given mobile phase composition. As mentioned on the previous slide, we theorize that analytes with stronger charges would show longer retention since they are able to form more bridges, and that is shown quite conclusively in this experiment. Also shown here is how decreasing the relative amount of water in the mobile phase increases bis type retention, or alternatively, increasing the relative concentration of the organic component of the mobile phase increases retention. This further solidifies our theory that reducing the overall water content of the mobile phase increases retention by minimizing the effect of the solvation layer, and therefore increases the ability of the charged compounds to interact and generate retention. We can see quite clearly that too much water isn't good for any bridge, whether it be hundreds of meters long or just a few nanometers long. Let's look at some interesting applications of bis retention. Here we show polylysine, which is a high molecular weight charge compound that is commercially available as a food additive. It is produced as a mixture of oligomers of many different lengths. Typically, analysis of polylysines is done by Sieg's ex exclusion chromatography, but this method produces very little information about oligomer distribution. In contrast with BIST, individual oligomers can be resolved up to 25 lysine units. Elution is observed for any number of charges in the molecule if the concentration of water is high enough. We already know that the more charges a given analyte has, the more it will retain with BIST. Let's take a look at the different retention and elution equilibrium states that seem to govern this new separation mode. In an ion exchange column with a positively charged surface and a positively charged analyte in the presence of a negatively charged, multi-charged ionic modifier, we can draw this equal equation that governs the equilibrium states of all the ions in the mobile phase and on the charged surface. This equilibrium, in our opinion, governs the retention of the positively charged analyte, A+. It provides a mechanism of exchange for the analyte molecules between a bound state and the mobile state. With an aqueous mobile phase, all ions participating in this equilibrium are solvated and distance to the extent that the bridge cannot be efficiently formed. This leads to a reduction in retention. As we have already demonstrated, the degree of the analyte's retention in BIST strongly depends on the number of charges in the analyte ion. How might other factors affect retention? A molecule's geometry and its charge position, as well as other characteristics of the ions, can be contributing factors in the retention of analytes as well. This allows for high selectivity to be achieved in the separation of similarly structured molecules. This is demonstrated by the separation of paraquat and diquat, two common pesticides. The two compounds have different molecular geometries and different relative positions of their positive charges. This difference provides sufficient ground for the easy separation of these two molecules. Similarly, differences in geometry and relative charge position in the ions allow for high selectivity to be achieved in the separation of three basic amino acids. Here's another example of separating similarly structured compounds, this time catecholamines. This allows for high selectivity to be achieved in the separation of structurally similar isomers of colistin. So far, we have looked only at cation retention with BIST using a sulfuric acid buffer. Now, let's see how BIST works with anions. Before we start, though, we should look at the several possible multi-charged ionic modifiers that can be used to retain anions along using BIST. This list includes, but is certainly not limited to, DMP, TMDAP, magnesium ion, and calcium ion. Using a negatively charged cation exchange column and a multi-charged TMDAP buffer, we were able to retain and separate a mixture of seven, seven different anions. Notice how the elution order is reversed between BIST and typical IE separation. 
This offers a unique opportunity to analyze mixtures that are traditionally difficult to analyze via ion exchange. BIST can exploit slight differences in these similarly structured organic acids to generate retention with high selectivity. Another example of BIST, separation of similarly structured compounds, this time with fluoroacetic acid on a short column. Because the mobile phase is comprised of volatile TMDAP and formic acid, phase change detectors such as ELSD, CAD, and mass spec can be used. We show here the effect the number of charges of the ionic mobile phase modifier has on the retention of negatively charged tartrazine. It is quite amazing that negatively charged tartrazine can be retained almost 100 minutes on a negatively charged column, but also completely loses any retention if single charged TEA replaces the double charged TMDAP as the ionic modifier in the mobile phase. This is quite unheard of. Magnesium 2 plus ion also serves as a formidable ionic modifier to generate bis retention of tartrazine. TMDAP may serve as a stronger ionic modifier since its charge is distributed over a larger distance and therefore may be able to form a stronger bridge and generate much longer retention. Magnesium 2 plus ion also serves as a formidable ionic modifier to generate bis retention of tartrazine. TMDAP may serve as a stronger ionic modifier since its charge is distributed over a larger distance and therefore may be able to form a stronger bridge and generate much longer retention. We demonstrated already many examples of separation of cations and BIST with sulfuric acid as the ionic modifier, but there are many other multi-charged ionic modifiers that can retain cations with BIST. In addition to sulfuric acid, other ionic modifiers that can effectively retain cations using BIST include, but again, are not limited to, phosphoric acid, carbonic acid, hexafluoroglutaric acid, and oxalic acid. Like TMDAP, hexafluoroglutaric acid is volatile enough to be compatible with ELSD, CAD, or mass spec detection. BIST gradients can be fairly simple and can help make complex separations relatively easy. Here, several basic drug compounds were retained with BIST using a simple gradient, reducing the acetonitrile concentration from 70% to 10% over 10 minutes. Applying a gradient to the organic modifier concentration allows for a specific but convenient separation. The initial higher organic concentration starts the separation, while the lower concentration towards the end ensures the analytes elute in a timely manner. Not everyone has 100 minutes to wait for their BIST separations. Here we show the separation of the active compounds in NyQuil using BIST. Note that the first compound, acetaminophen, has no charge and is retained by the Heilic mechanism. The BIST mobile phase and column combination allows users to employ Heilic for polar non-charged analytes while simultaneously allowing for BIST separation of charged analytes. Amazingly, BIST retention can even be generated without any water at all. We can completely replace the acetonitrile water model for the mobile phase with 100% alcoholic mobile phases. Methanol, ethanol, and isopropanol each have slightly different polarities and thus can mimic the BIS behavior of standard acetonitrile water mobile phases. We can see this clearly with the, above, with the retention here of 2-naphthalene sulfonic acid. We can see this clearly with the retention of 2-naphthalene sulfonic acid. The degree of retention strongly depends on the polarity of the alcohol that composes the mobile phase. The retention increases from methanol to ethanol to isopropanol, since methanol is the most polar and the most similar to water, and isopropanol is the least polar of the three. A solvation type layer may form around the ions in a purely alcohol-based mobile phase, and this solvation layer becomes progressively weaker as you change to alcohols with lower polarities, and thus the retention becomes stronger. We can see this clearly with the retention here. As we progress to the different alcohols, retention increases lending credence to our theory. Here, we employ a gradient mobile phase that starts with the majority of the less polar IPA and shifts to a completely methanol-based mobile phase. This generates bis separation and retention of these differently charged amines, but ensures that the retention occurs in a reasonable time. We previously showed how high molecular weight polylysine oligomers can be retained with using BIST. Let's now explore some other applications of high molecular weight molecules being retained with BIST. To generate separation in a reasonable time, we'll employ a gradient to switch from a higher retention mobile phase to a lower retention mobile phase. 
Retention using BIST in a gradient elution on polylysine can also produce good molecular weight resolution for higher molecular weight polymers. In this example, group resolution based on average molecular weight was achieved. Here we show impressive resolution for high molecular weight PEI retention using BIST in a step gradient elution. The large number of units allows for a lot of charges to be present, generating strong retention using BIST. So, the latter half of the gradient, here solvent B, has no organic component and a single charged ionic modifier in order to quickly elute the PEI polymers, independent of their molecular weight once they've been retained. So, the latter half of the gradient, solvent B, has no organic component and a single charged ionic modifier in order to quickly elute the PEI polymers independent of their molecular weight once they've been retained. Any molecular weight oligomers can be analyzed with this short method. The retention time can be altered if the time of the first gradient mobile phase step is changed. Other oligomers that can be retained with BIST and a step gradient include anoxaparin. DMP and acetic acid are used as the ionic modifier and buffer since they are volatile and allow for detection via ELSD and mass spec. Heparin can also be retained using BIST and a similar step gradient. This method is also compatible with mass spec, ELSD, and CAD. Here's an example of a simple separation and retention of insulin using BIST and a gradient elution. Again, BIST allows for high selectivity between structurally similar insulins due to the slight changes in the peptide composition. Again, BIST allows for high selectivity between structurally similar insulins due to the slight changes in the peptide composition, geometry, and number of charges in the molecules. BIST is not only universal in the compounds it can retain and separate, but also in the types of detection that it is compatible. BIST is compatible with detection methods in the low UV around 200 nanometers. Here, different organic acids are retained and separated using a TMDAP modifier. Here, different amino acids are retained and separated using a sulfuric acid modifier. Notice how the columns switch from cation exchange to anion exchange, and therefore we needed to use a different ionic modifier. BIST is also compatible with non-suppressed conductivity detection, as shown here with the separation and retention of three different fluoroacetic acids. BIST is also compatible with mass spec, specifically electrospray ionization, as shown here with the retention of maleic acid. We used a Shimanzu LCMS 2020 mass spec and used the selected ion monitoring mode and were able to achieve a low detection limit down to 0.05 parts per billion. Here's another application of BIST with ESI minus using selected ion monitoring, where different organic acids were retained and detected. As we mentioned previously, HFGA is compatible with both BIST and mass spec. We can see clear retention of diquat this time using positive electrospray ionization. As we've seen, BIST can support a wide variety of detection modes for all kinds of separations. However, not every ionic modifier will work ideally with every detection mode. This table shows our recommendations for which ionic modifier should be used depending on the detection mode and polarity of the analyte of interest. We saw today that three conditions need to be met in order to generate BIST interactions. First, a double charged ionic modifier. Second, an ionic modifier that is oppositely charged to both the analyte and the stationary phase. And third, a reduced water concentration in the mobile phase. Once these conditions are met, BIST can retain and separate nearly every type of compound, whether it's charged or not charged, large or small, hydrophilic or hydrophobic. While it cannot retain neutral hydrophobic compounds, these compounds can still be separated from charged or hydrophilic compounds that will retain using BIST conditions. BIST is quite the powerful chromatography tool, and we hope it becomes a key part of your chromatographic toolbox. If you'd like to help us explore more of the unknown chromatography world with BIST, you can click the link in the description to our ResearchGate project, or you can send an email to BIST at silk.com. You can find more information about BIST by visiting our website at BIST.LC. We'd like to acknowledge the dedicated research team here at Silk who have made this work possible. Thank you for joining us today.